Well, uh, we'll move on to our first conversation now. According to the MBS, uh, in recent months, the um, cost of healthy diet has risen faster than general inflation and food inflation. With rising costs of um, living, the word palliative is, be is being talked a lot about right now um, after the COVID-19 um, scourge. But how can the right people get the palliatives and what can be added to make it more um, effective. Joining us for that conversation now is Zuera Yusufu, Managing Director, CEO of the Aliko Dangote Foundation. Um, joining me right here in the studio. Great to have you. Good morning. Welcome. Nice to be here. Yeah, so yes. definitely the, the buzzword now. It's all about uh, palliatives, 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 palliatives. And we know it's because of the cost of living um, right. crisis at, at this time. But there is that risk that the people that really need these palliatives, most of the time they don't really get it. What's the way around this? So, thank you very much for having me. Um, we have embarked on this uh, million bag distribution of rice across the country. Um, the initial impetus for this was Ramadan, right? So we do Ramadan feeding every year, focusing on the Muslim communities in particular. But um, this year, um, given the stress in the country around food, Anaja Aliko decided that we should do more and that we should expand this to all uh, vulnerable Nigerians of all faiths. Um, it also happens to coincide with Lent, right? And so we um, embarked on this million uh, 10 kg bag distribution across the country, flagged off Lagos actually just yesterday. So how we're doing the distribution is we're partnering with organizations and NGOs that do this as a matter of course, they do distributions, right? So here in Lagos, and I have my little reminder of right. all the organizations that we work with, yes. but we're gonna be distributing this food through One Umma, Kokun Foundation, Lekki, food, uh, Lekki Muslim Umma, Lagos Food Bank, Romi's Life Support, Form One, and a few other organizations that really reach out into the community. Um, in Kano, we work with uh, Hizba, and this is an organization that is in the communities. They drew up the list, we work together, you know, a thousand people in each community, et cetera, validated um, and with a very orderly um, distribution process. So it's absolutely possible to do, that's how we're doing it. And that's how um, we're making sure that the food gets to the neediest because we're actually working um, in partnership with organizations that do this. Yeah, because it would be quite a, uh, annoying because you, you see pilots is being you know, spread, distributed around, but you are hungry, you're not getting any of that right. um, food. So right. that can be quite, you know, frustrating. But we're seeing, you know, corporates actually, mm -hmm. you know, getting into this palliative distribution mm -hmm. um, um, uh, at this time. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me mm -hmm. about how it can be done, you know, so that uh, you, at the end of the day, you don't end up wasting resources right. and you actually get, you know, to the right people. Well, to be fair, part of me feels that the resources aren't wasted if people get them. Right. right? Um, it's a different kind of waste, right? If you, if you donate and things don't get distributed, that's another form of waste, yes? So for people to get it, you just have to be very clear and um, organized about how you distribute. We work in partnership with the states. It's not like we're doing this by ourselves and we're just, you know, jumping in the states and getting NGOs. We work with the state, with the local government, and with the NGOs that have the capacity to deliver in the in the uh, communities. So we have specific structures. I mean, you'd be very um, impressed. I, I think we should have sent you videos of how, you know, the distributions have gone so far in Adama, for instance, yesterday, um, how we're gonna start doing it here in Lagos. And, you know, I encourage you to, to come with us and to see how the distribution is actually going. It's orderly, it's done by, you identify the beneficiaries in advance, so in a community, Right, the leaders know who they're going to be distributing the bags to. Issue a voucher, you show up with your voucher and you get your bag on a specific day. So there's no queue, there's no, I mean there's a queue, but there's not like a, it's not a free-for-all kind of a setup. And so we were very specific to design it that way because the goal is to really reach one million vulnerable uh, households in Nigeria, in all our 774 LGAs, regardless of faith, in this holy month of Ramadan. Now we know some other corporates might be looking to actually, you know, get involved uh, with this. What do you think should be the first step, you know, if you're a corporate looking to, you know, get involved in helping right. the less privileged at this time? 
I think there's so many things that people can do. The needs are many, right? It's not just food. People need everything. Um, if you think about medical supplies and medicine, you know, common drugs that people are struggling to get, um, the cost of you know, let me not call any brands, but like the cost of like blood pressure medicine or, you know, diabetes have skyrocketed. So what are people supposed to do? So there's a lot of things that corporates could get involved to help um, the more the more vulnerable. It's not just about food distribution. It's really about, you know, how do we support opportunities also for poor people, vulnerable people to be able to make their own livelihood so that they're not dependent on aid. Our goal isn't to, you know, keep people in perpetual need so that we're, you know, dashing them charity. This is us helping people at the point of their need. Right. But really the goal of our foundation is really to empower Nigerians and Africans so that they can go and get their own. Right. And you did you did mention, you know, essential medicines at this mm -hmm. time. And you know, when you even go to the pharmacy and yes. trying to get multivitamins for instance. Yes. Some people are having to, you know, just go back to your fruits, you know, yes. at this point because Absolutely. the prices are really, really high. Absolutely. But, you know, we've talked about um, teaching a man to fish, yes. you know, and not just, you know, handing that fish. Um, but when you did talk about empowerment, uh, walk us through how that works, you okay. know, for you. All right. So, I mean, we're all familiar with the concept. You can you know, help people forever. First of all, you'll never be able to help everybody. Right. And then the goal is for people to come out of that situation. So we work on, um, we have several initiatives that are in the empowerment space, including our micro-grant program. We did this in Lagos a few years ago. We've done it across 13 states so far. Um, no, across 20 plus states, we have 13 states to go so far. And the goal is to reach the thousand most vulnerable women in each local government area. We give them a grant, in some cases a phone, for them to start an activity. And that is a very direct um, poverty reduction intervention. People need um, education, they need training, they need skills. So we have skills acquisition centers, we have one in Kano, we've supported universities, um, we're supporting training programs, because what we want is for people to be able to lift themselves out of the circumstance that they're in. That's also why nutrition is so important to us because from the beginning of your life, if you don't get it right, if children don't have access to the right food in the first thousand days of their lives, then it's gonna be impossible for them to rise up to the level of their God-given potential. So these are all the things that the foundation is um, involved in doing. Right, and we've but, seen the cost of healthy food actually rise. You know, yes. From, I think the NBA started tracking that recently, and <laughs> yes. it did go up from January you know, into yes. February. But mm -hmm. you know, talk to me now about um, boosting food production mm -hmm. in um, Nigeria. What mm -hmm. for you is the way to go about this? So I think that there's a, there's a misconception amongst young people that agriculture is just, you know, for villagers and for poor people, and that it's not an attractive and lucrative business. On the contrary, right, we all have to eat. Um, even in the Dongote group, we have a rice project that is going to be producing a million tons of rice a year. Um, that gives jobs to the farmers that are growing the rice, that you know, empowers the community where the rice is being grown. We have our own farms, we also have the outgrowers who live in the, you know, around the communities where our uh, rice growing um, operations right. are. And so the, what we're trying to do is really incentivize people to go and farm. Um, we're doing a backward integration project in sugar where we're growing the actual sugar cane. So people are working in the sugar cane farms and seeing how much value you can extract out of sugar cane. And so, you know, getting people to go back to farming is huge. We have a lot of farm farming land, like arable land in Nigeria, and we need to be producing more of what we consume so that we can reduce our dependency on exports, which obviously are part of the challenges that we're dealing with right, now. Right, but we can be sending out precious um, dollars at this time. Yes, to food. import food that we can grow here. Right. right. So definitely, what are you seeing, you know, going forward? Um, we've seen experts, you know, talk about some kind of soft landing, soft landing somehow or no landing at all. But you know, some have said, you know what, well, it's gonna be a hard landing because we've seen a lot, the macro headwinds you know, are still there um, right now. What are you seeing you know, for welfare you know, in this country going mm -hmm. forward? So I think that we're gonna be um, doing humanitarian work 
for the foreseeable future. And I'm saying this because just looking at the reality of our situation across the country, um, there are challenges that we all see. Like, I'm not making this up. And right. so, you know, while these things are being sorted by our leadership, um, the truth is, a lot of you know children are still out of school a lot of farmers are still not going back to their farms to produce the food that they need so there's a lot of um there's a lot of need that we need to address immediately and so you know even speaking with the uh governor of lagos yesterday he was saying how you know they also are doing a very big um palliative drive and you know really trying to support people because right now um in the near future the needs are really still quite um severe right and, and definitely we're hoping you know going forward of course we don't have to work with palliatives of course anymore. we don't want to ever we don't ever want to have to say palliatives again exactly. we never want to say get rid of that you know food. So, yes we need you know everybody to just be working and you know taking care of themselves and, and doing what needs to be done all right thank yes. you so much it was great having your perspective thank you uh, with zura yusufu managing director ceo of aliko dangote uh, foundation it was great to have your perspective today. thank you so much thank lady you. all right all right, so yeah, we'll take a, a break now. When we come back, yeah, I did talk about the Naira um, rally, you know, at this time. We're going to break down what's driving that rally. That's the moment. Do stay with us.